I really wish things weren't this way, but unfortunately, everything in life is optics, and the optics for the Golden State Warriors right now, as of the first two games of the season, are complete shit. Not a little bit, not halfway, completely, totally, utterly garbage. And due to that fact, on this trajectory, the narratives about Steph Curry are gonna start flying. Now, before we get started, I wanna be clear that, for me, it's literally only been two games, and I don't make any real determinations on an entire season based off of two games, but Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors have been making grown men cry for somewhere in the ballpark of around uh, four or five years. So for them, they've already seen enough and they're loving every second of this. Here's what's forming. We've never seen Steph Curry, the superstar player, the one that broke out in the 2015 season. We've never seen that Steph Curry play without great teammates. The worst team that he's had since then, and I'm speaking relatively, were the 2015 Warriors. Every iteration of the Warriors after that were better. So not only have we never seen Steph Curry, the MVP slash superstar without great teammates, recently we've only seen him as a part of a super team. Save for that little nugget of time where they got to play with the original Warriors once Kevin Durant got hurt, for the other 99% of the time of those three seasons, the Warriors were a fairy tale roster. So that's one thing. Now back to the optics. Everyone has always sworn that that 2015 championship does not happen if Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love are healthy. It does not help anything that it took the Warriors longer than it should have to put away a team that is deemed one of the worst finals rosters of all time. So the very next year, they played that roster healthy and they lost. They blew the 3-1 lead. Now, of course, the energy is never the same. People do not equate having Draymond Green miss one game and losing Andrew Bogut. They don't see that on the same line as missing Kyrie and Kevin Love for the entire series. Combine that with the fact that he played like piss in Game 7 while LeBron James played great, well, that's where people start to feel like they just haven't seen quite enough from Steph Curry himself to justify the amount of praise he was getting over these past few years. Because coming back to win multiple championships with the most stacked team of all time, it didn't do a crazy amount for him individually, the same way it didn't for Kevin Durant. And so, after multiple freak injuries, to the roster, they end up losing to the Raptors in 2019. Nobody seemed to hold that one over Steph Curry individually, especially when they were playing box and one against the guy. But that upcoming season was a point of interest because Kevin Durant was gone and the other Splash Brother was gone. So quite naturally, that brought up a point of interest. We've seen James Harden play with a team that didn't seem that great. We've seen LeBron James play with teams not that great. We saw Kevin Durant in 2014 lose Russell Westbrook and go on to win MVP. So what does Steph Curry look like without the magic, without the fairy tale, without this aura that's been around Golden State these last few years? years where everything was just short of perfection. And as it pertains to the answer of that question, we only got a taste of it last year. A very tiny sample size, and it wasn't impressive. It was not encouraging. He played four total games before injuring his hand, and he averaged a mere 20 points on 40% field goal shooting and 24% from three. Now, again, tiny sample size. But in terms of optics, this is exactly what that crew was looking for. The crew that says Curry has been somewhat protected and insulated for the last five years. Without star teammates, they were looking for him to look very regular, and he looked very regular. But of course, the injury, Clay was injured, so the season was lost. Coming into the 2021 season, originally the expectation was that he, Clay, and Dre were going to maybe contend together. It's certainly not the same team from five years ago. They don't have the same pieces, the same chemistry. They're integrating some younger guys. So the original case study was to see how far this three could still go. But of course, with the heart shattering news of Clay Thompson's Achilles, at best, this was going to be Curry, Dre, and a first overall pick. And where we currently sit, it's actually worse than that. Draymond Green has hasn't played in preseason, he hasn't appeared in either of the two games due to an ankle injury, so after nearly a year and a half long hiatus from regular basketball activities, he hasn't even had an opportunity to start clicking with the one guy he might have some chemistry with. And what has essentially been his first overall pick sidekick has had no basketball activity since last November. Well, regular basketball activity. As far as preparing for his first NBA game, he's had no training camp, no preseason, just thrown into the fire. By the way, I don't mean to leave Eric Pascal out of all of this. All last year, he looked like he was going to be a great piece to what was supposed to be a healthy core, so there will once again not be that, but if the Warriors are to look better this season at some point than they do right now, he's going to be an important piece of it. Either way, all of this has kind of combined into the perfect storm where through the first two games of this season, what we have yet again is another struggling Steph Curry. It's looking very similar to the way it was trending at the beginning of last season. His first game against the Nets was a 20 point outing, 7 of 21, did not play well at all, and in another terrible Christmas Day performance, he's put up 19 points, 2 of 10 from 3, 6 of 17 overall. Both of these were hideous blowouts. And what does this all mean to a certain crowd? It means Steph Curry was never the player that you all thought he was. To them, this is proof that he's always been a system point guard, he's always needed amazing teammates, and that he could never do the things that Harden and LeBron could do. Yes, after six games, Steph Curry is a complete fraud, who's only able to perform at a certain level in a certain setting. Now, as fun as it seems it would be to just jump straight to that conclusion, this does kind of sort of totally discount the years before 2015. The years before Steve Kerr, where Steph Curry would actually do a lot 
lot with the ball as opposed to creating so much without it. This at a time where Klay Thompson and Draymond Green were not yet the players that they would become and not only were the Warriors a really good team, they won some playoff series, they were really competitive in others and Steph Curry was very good. Although he wasn't winning championships or MVPs at that time, it is important to revisit these years to say that the Steph Curry we see that's been playing absolutely terrible for 6 games does not fully speak for Steph Curry without all-star teammates. It's also extremely important to actually pay attention to what's going on on the floor, specifically for this season. So again for the record, I'm not looking at 2 games and extrapolating an entire season, but the game plan is pretty clear right now. After multiple championships and MVPs, Curry's not sneaking up on anybody. They know what he wants to do, and given the current roster makeup and the chemistry street with said roster, it's very easy to game plan against it. Steph Curry off of pick and rolls right now and probably for quite a bit throughout this season is going to be receiving more attention than ever. Why? Because for the first time probably ever, you are cool with literally anyone on the floor taking a shot. Not named Steph Curry. Andrew Wiggins, please take shots. As a matter of fact, get the ball and go ISO. Take a pull up midi. Kelly Oubre in the corner? It's not Klay Thompson anymore. By all means, have it. Are they going to shoot as piss poor as they have throughout the first two games all season? Well, Andrew Wiggins might, but no matter what the result is, Steph Curry with the ball in his hands, that's receiving all the attention. There's going to be two guys on the receiving end of that waiting for whichever direction he wants to go and as the season goes on, this will probably get better with Wiseman because he's going to be able to pop or roll, he has a very bright future, so that will alleviate some pressure, but for the first time in quite a while, that floor is going to be as small as it's ever been when Curry has the ball in his hands. And what about when he doesn't, because at this point I don't really know who doesn't know about Curry's off ball movement, I don't know who hasn't watched for this, but it's been a gigantic component of his game ever since Steve Kerr took over and again with his current roster, any team that actually has a defensive game plan ain't having it. Throughout the Christmas Day game, Drew Holiday was damn near joined at the hit with Steph Curry while he was running around the court. And it doesn't just hurt that there's not a Klay Thompson out there to draw gravity and attention away anymore, but every player in the NBA does not have an equal feel for the floor, meaning the guys that he have right now, even when their chemistry gets better and they learn the sets, it doesn't mean they're ever going to instinctively be as good at some of the things that his old teammates were. And so I always said the 2016 Warriors were not a super team, they just played great basketball together. Everything was not a set play, but the IQ on that floor was sky high and so was the unselfishness. And so because these guys were always on the same page, they could do quite a bit of improvising when needed to get guys open shots. This current squad we're looking at, after 9 months having not played basketball and most of this team having not played together, even when they do reach whatever their best is in terms of being on the same page in chemistry and off ball movement, I still don't think we're going to see the same Curry that we've been seeing. He knows what he's doing, he knows his game and he knows how to get to his spots. But on a floor where defenders are likely only going to be worried about James Wiseman if your name isn't Steph Curry, the longer that it takes guys to understand movement, the worse Curry is probably going to look. Until then, a lot of his shots are going to have to be these freaker nature shots, the ones that we're used to seeing him take. A couple of behind the back dribbles, a contested shot, logo shots. We're going to see a lot of those attempts that we know he can make, but also remember that in the past years we've seen those, those are highlights. A good portion of Steph Curry's points have always been good quality looks. The way this team is set up right now, it's it's kind of simple to make sure he doesn't get those quality looks. The absolute best version of Steph Curry was never an ISO scorer. He could do that, but that's not the best version of him. The best version of him does those things that are flashy, while creating shots for him and his teammates, mostly through movement. In these games, if you're actually watching, he still creates a lot of looks for his guys that they simply don't knock down. Which is why, even when he's struggling while he's in the game, you can look at it and say if he has to go sit for an extended period of time, they are going to end up losing by a lot. They don't have an amazing backup up for him right now, and when he's not on the floor, that creation stops. As a matter of fact, on the Christmas Day game, that's when they pretty much played through Wiggins and, well, we know the result of that. For the moment, once again, not determining an entire season off of two games, he definitely has the tools to do better than he does, but uh, watch the tape. If Curry creates looks and the shooting is historically bad, and then because the shooting is historically bad, it's very easy to stop whatever he wants to create, well, that's how you get what we've gotten so far. But life is optics, and so if by the end of this, Curry hasn't looked great throughout the the entire season, the Warriors missed the playoffs, it is going to look as simple as Curry once had great teammates and super teams and did great, and then he didn't, and then he didn't do great. Absolutely nothing else will be accounted for and these narratives will fly. But it's been two games, let's see what adjustments are made. I assume as he gets into the groove of things he'll probably look a bit more aggressive because again he has been off of regular basketball for quite some time. Let's actually see their starting lineup with Draymond Green, somebody he's used to playing with, their vocal leader. I think they can definitely look better than they do now because, well, that's really not difficult to do given the circumstances. Anyways, let me know your thoughts about the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications every time a new video drops. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you all on the next one.